In the year 2000, there were only a handful or so of countries whose population were in decline. Skip forward to 2025 and there are significantly more. Some sources claiming 40 or so countries and territories are seeing a decline in their populations. But why exactly is this? Why are so many places seeing their populations start to shrink? Well, there's a plethora of reasons why, but here's a few. In some cases, it's purely because of high migration rates. Regions like Eastern Europe see a lot of their working age inhabitants leaving to find work in wealthier countries. In some countries, it's simply due to not being able to afford to have children, and in others, it's because people are waiting longer than ever to have kids and or prioritizing their careers. For the last few decades, it's been widely accepted and generally agreed upon that the world is overpopulated, with too many humans being born. But in recent years, this topic has caused a bit of a stir. Many people are starting to believe quite the opposite, that there aren't enough humans. Now, this really depends on where you live. If you live in a country like India or many of the countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, you're probably in the camp that there are too many people. There are roughly 740 million people in India alone that are under the age of 30. That's nearly three quarters of a billion people who need to compete with one another to find work and somewhere to live. However, the same can't be said for a country like Japan, whose population pyramid looks pretty much the opposite of India's. There are a worryingly low amount of people under the age of 30 in Japan. Under 10 is even worse. In 2024, Japan saw a population decrease of around 617,000. That's the equivalent of losing the entire country of Suriname from their total population. That's kind of terrifying. What's even more alarming is the estimated population decrease in China. While it's difficult to get an exact figure from Chinese sources, some estimates suggest a decline of around 3.2 million. Although this represents just a 0.23% decrease, it's equivalent to losing the entire population of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the 133rd most populated country in the world. Now, whether these declining numbers is a good thing or not depends on your outlook on the consequences. In some ways, it's a good thing, as it reduces congestion, pollution, and strain on resources. However, if trends continue, then some countries will be in a rather dire situation in a few decades' time. Let's take South Korea as an example. So if we rewind to 1953, when the Korean War unofficially ended, the country's population was just under 21 million. At the time, believe it or not, South Korea was one of the poorest nations on Earth. Birth rates were extremely high due to the fact that the country had an agricultural economy. Add this to the post-war baby boom and the country's population began to skyrocket. The South Koreans then performed somewhat of a miracle. Starting in around the 1960s, the country saw an economic boom, leading to a more prosperous country. Its population then pretty much doubled within 30 or so years. But once we hit the 2010s, this increase slowed substantially, to the point where it saw its peak in 2020 and has only decreased ever since. Current projections have South Korea's population dropping to around 22 million by the end of the century. Back to where it was at the end of the Korean War. As prosperous as the country will be, especially when compared to the 1950s, there is one gigantic difference. There will be very few young people, but a large number of elderly individuals. It is projected that in 2100, the number of people over 95 will roughly equal the number of those aged 9 and under. But if robots aren't mainstream by then, then who will take care of this huge elderly population? Well, it will have to be those in the working age, those who should really be in STEM fields if they want to progress and grow the economy. This is, of course, unless the country opens its doors to migrants, which this part of the world isn't too well known for. At the time of making this video, some 96% of the country are of Korean ethnicity. So let's imagine it's now the year 2100 and South Korea hasn't opened that door. Their population now sits at around 21 million. Many of the country's youth are working in fields that support the elderly, meaning there is a labour shortage, a lack of innovation and a huge lack of investment into their futures as it goes into supporting the elderly population. Also, what will happen to their cities, especially concrete jungles like Seoul, whose urban population in 2025 is around 26 million, more than the entire projected population of the country in just 75 years' time. In most major cities like, say, Toronto, London or Sydney, house prices have absolutely gone through the roof. 
leading to insane prices that are just too hard to achieve for the regular working person. Quite simply, this is due to high demand to live in such cities with great economic opportunities. But what about Seoul in 2100? If there are far fewer people, especially younger ones, there will be less competition to purchase property, which could actually lead to cheaper prices. By 2100, if these projections are correct, South Korea could drop all the way down to the 72nd most populated country on Earth. By then, the world will be an almost completely unrecognisable place, although China and India are predicted to still take the top two spots. By then, India's population will not only have peaked, but dropped down to levels not far off what it sees today. China, on the other hand, is projected to potentially see its population cut in more than half. So what on earth will China's many cities look like? China quite unbelievably has some 113 cities with a population greater than a million. Many of which are cities that are pretty much brand new and popped up out of nowhere. So if by the year 2100 China's population has decreased as much as is projected, what will happen to these cities? Will there be ghost towns or simply knocked down and erased from history? Honestly, only time will tell. The difference with China is that, unlike many Western countries that have been wealthy for a long time, its population only became relatively wealthier in the last couple or few decades. As a result, many people haven't had enough time to build sufficient wealth for retirement. This means that China's aging population could have more far-reaching consequences than countries like, say, Italy or Germany. A country, or should I say territory, who saw a far larger population decrease in terms of percentage loss than both South Korea or China is St. Martin. The territory saw a population decrease of around 5% in 2024. However, it must be noted that their total population is only around 26,000. For reference, that's around a third of the amount of births that India sees per day. A lowering birth rate and ageing population, hurricanes and people seeking better opportunities abroad means that the region, as a percentage, saw the largest decline on Earth. Again, it is worth noting that this means the population only decreased by around 1,300 or so. A drop in the ocean compared to the likes of what China, Russia or Japan sees. One argument that is seen as pro-population is that the more humans there are, the more innovation and inventions there'll be. More humans in brains means more talent. Just look at the technological breakthroughs humans have gone through in the last century. We've landed humans on the moon, saw the birth of the internet, and now the AI revolution. Imagine what could be capable in 2100 if we have 100 billion humans. Yeah, the planet could be overwhelmed with this number of humans, but this could be counteracted by inventions that sustainably allow for this many people to thrive. A lack of space definitely isn't a problem for humans on Earth. If all 8 billion or so humans alive today lived in the density of Manhattan in New York City, we'd only occupy around 278,000 kilometers squared of space. That's a smaller area than the country of Italy. However, living conditions in this scenario would obviously be quite horrendous and unlivable. However, in saying that, maybe it could be possible, as there is currently a project on Earth that would see a density of around double of that density. The line in Saudi Arabia is a mega project set to be finalised in 2039, where the project hopes to house some 9 million people. However, this city will be planned specifically and strategically to be able to house this many people in such a relatively small space. Whereas places like Manhattan were originally built for a very different world. So, which side of the fence are you on? Is less humans a good thing or a bad thing? Discuss in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more content like this, and as always, thank you very much for watching.